fight for. Monkey the legend here. My hope everybody is warm and dry at this time of year. Tonight, I will be reciting a classic poem by the poet Creek Runner called Twas the Night Before Sasmas. I hope you enjoy. Bring the beat back. <laughs> Sasmas. <clears throat> Twas the night before Sasmas, and all through the forest, not a creature was stirring, not even a tourist. The giftings were placed under the fir trees with care, in hopes that some hominid would take up the deer. <laughs> The little ones were snuggled, all warm in their nest, laying on cedar boughs, because they were the best. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down to wait out the cold snap. When out on the clear cut there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the nest to see what was the matter. Away to the clearing I flew like a deer, saplings snapping, red eyes darting here and there. The moon shone on the valley covered in snow, giving a stark relief to the objects below, when to my astounded eyes I did watch a large sleigh pulled by eight Sasquatch with a stout driver so lively and catty, I knew in a moment it must be St. Patty. More rapid than eagles, her coursers they came, and she whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Buckwas, now Sanaquas, now stewards of the wood, on Yellowtop, on Skookum, search for those who are good. To the top of the ridge, to the top of the peak, now dash away, dash away, find who we seek. A single deer ran before the eight placed in the brace. It was the bait that was chased and the reason they raced. So over the treetops, the cursors they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Paddy too. But then in a twinkling, I returned to my nest, hearing heavy footballs and tree knocks and all of the rest. Down a large birch tree, St. Patty came with a bound, paused for a moment as she looked around. She was adorned in brown fur from her head to her foot, and her coat was all tarnished with tree sap to boot, 
a bundle of toys she had hung from her back, and she looked like a hoaxer just opening her pack. Her eyes, how they twinkled, her dimples, how merry. Her cheeks were like roses, with a nose not so furry. Her large mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the fur on her chin nowadays was as white as snow. A stump of a pipe held tight in her teeth, and the smoke it encircled her head like a wreath. Stole the pipe from Steenberg, she patted her belly. That shook when she laughed like a bowl full of jelly. She was stout and muscular and right jolly old hominid. And I smiled when I saw her as all my family did. So with a pursing of lips and a twist of her head, she soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. She spoke not a word and went straight to her work, giving out cleverly made forest toys and then turned with a jerk. And laying her finger aside of her nose, gave a nod and up the birch tree she rose. She sprang to her sleigh, to her team gave a whistle, and away they all ran like the launching of a missile. Watching high jumping deer followed by eight pounding out a beat, I saw a bag tossed from the sleigh which landed at my feet. And I opened the bag right where it lay. Lumps of frozen scat, all neatly tagged, addressed to hoaxers, and then carefully bagged. A number of names that you may recognize, especially those who will get the larger size. And I heard her scream as she drove out of sight. Happy sasmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> Merry Sass Mass, everyone. Bring the beat back.